Hey, business building warrior, welcome to the weekend update. If you're listening to this episode right when it came out, it's Saturday. And what we like to do on Saturdays is still work. A lot of us work six days and rest one. Hey, good enough for God, good enough for us. That's the way he created the whole universe, right? So we're working on a Saturday, sure, but why not take along a great update, a podcast episode that we've gone back and reviewed from maybe two weeks, six weeks, six months ago. We've got hundreds of great interviews. So what we do on the weekends is we go back, we find those great episodes that maybe slipped past your radar or some of those great insights and tips and strategies from some of the successful students and just kind of break it down into little easily digested nuggets for your weekend update. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to dive into that in just a moment after I make a couple of announcements. First, if you haven't got a free copy yet of the brand new, all new, our 11th update of the Silent Sales Machine book. This is the book that started this podcast. It started our community, the 73,000 members of our free Facebook group, our incredible events. It all started because I sat down about 20 years ago and wrote a book over a weekend. It was actually just a PDF report at the time. And it took off. And it started this incredible movement that is now thousands of business building warriors all over the world. It wasn't because of anything that I did. I was just making some observations and sharing what others had taught me. I kind of compiled the information into one place with the premise of, hey, you can use the internet to grow the business of your dreams. And here's the rules I'm kind of discovering. Here's some of the things you should avoid I was discovering. And there's a group of us, we just kind of compiled this information and kept learning new things. Well, I've updated it. And the 11th update is now available. All the stuff you should avoid, the legitimate opportunities that are available to you, the mindset that's required in order to tackle these opportunities, a lot of very specific strategic advice on using the internet to launch and grow the business of your dreams, multiple income streams, using the internet creatively. That's the book. So go to silentsalesmachine.com and you can see more about it. Or you can text the word free, that's F-R-E-E, to this phone number. It'll be in the show notes as well today. The phone number is 507-800-0090. Now, if you happen to live outside the United States or Canada, that might not work for you. So just email our support team. There's a link at silentgym.com and say, hey, heard Jim make that free offer. Assuming the free offer is still around, which it will expire at some point, but now as we're launching the book, we wanted to give it away for free. That's a great opportunity for you. So there's that. And I also want to remind you, if you're new around here, this podcast is the supporting podcast for the leading Amazon seller training in the industry. I'm talking about the Proven Amazon course at provenamazoncourse.com. It's the longest running Amazon seller training in the industry with more success stories than any other, a bigger support team. There's about a hundred of us that support that course. All kinds of creative modules for every level of Amazon seller experience. You, if, if you know nothing about Amazon, you know nothing about e-commerce, we got you. If you've already got a 50,000, 100,000, a million dollar a month business, there's ideas in there I guarantee you have never been exposed to that could improve your business. So for $39 a month, RuvenAmazonCourse.com gets you a library of content that grows with you. We believe in -in just-in-time education, which means right when you need it, we got that next thing that you need and it's in there. And then we've got our free Facebook group support community at silentgym.com that's there to help you as well if you want to check that out. So that's the introduction for this weekend update. Let's go find out what the team has put together for us today. Enjoy this episode. We'll have brand new episodes for you starting at the beginning of the week, so don't miss those. Hey, have a great weekend. God bless you, warrior. Let's jump into the content. If you happen to be new around here, you haven't heard this yet, you can text the word FREE, F-R-E-E, text that word to the phone number I'm about to give you and get a copy of the all-new version of the book that launched this podcast and launched our community. We've coached over 10,000 people in e-commerce over the past 20 years. So many great success stories. And this book was what started it all. It was a story initially of my success with e-commerce, which is the only income my family's had for 20 years. We raised five kids, homeschooled them. My wife was able to stay home 
It's been all e-commerce, all multiple income streams, and we've identified a handful of legitimate opportunities, and we help you decide which one is best for you in this book. So you ready for that phone number? That number is 507-800-0090. Again, text the word free to the phone number 507-800-0090. That'll get you a free copy of the book, 100% free. Whole book, no other opt-in required. Now, if you want to use email to opt-in, there's a link in the show notes. Again, silentgym.com is the link you need. Jump over there. There's a link where you get an email version of the same book. So Sue, welcome back to Silent Sales Machine Radio. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be back. Well, I can't wait to dive into your story and capture some of this good stuff for the listeners. We talked a little offline, but it was time to hit the record button. You've got a lot going on. And it's a beautiful story. Let's go. Yeah. So I um, have been selling for just about a year. Um, so I think it was a one year last week. And I actually started with another group. So I started with a smaller group that was really just focused in on launching. And I think, you know, when I went through their course, they said, you know, you can start with retail arbitrage, you can move up to online arbitrage, wholesale, and then private label, but don't do private label if you're a beginner. And I think what I heard is skip steps one through three and go straight to four. So I actually started with private label. I was profitable. I was successful with private label just because of my background. It just kind of led me into that place instead of retail arbitrage to start with. So I started that in October, November, and then I decided I wanted to try a branded bundle. So I went ahead and I registered another trademark. I already had one for my private label. And I started that in December and it took off. And so that one ASIN did about 60,000 in about 60 days. And so it was selling like hotcakes. And on my way, we were doing a cross country trip for the holidays and I stumbled on your podcast. And so when I was on my way, I was listening to hours and hours and hours about replines. I had never done a replan really, like just a little bit, but not in the way that you taught it. So I bought the course. And as it turns out, my my hot selling ASIN got discontinued nationwide and I couldn't source it anymore. And I really didn't have any other ASINs in my pipeline, except that I was now doing the replans. And so when my sales dropped, I at least had a base of sales that I could kind of go back, look at, and test. And then that evolved into just creating more bundles. And so it took me a few months to kind of get my numbers back to where they were before, but I certainly had a lot more knowledge going into it. So the product that sold out was that first successful bundle you referenced, correct? And then that product just sold out and became, yeah, because part of doing the branded bundles is you're relying on another brand to keep making the stuff that's in your bundle. And it's a beautiful model. And we're going to talk more about it here as this, this show goes on. But I didn't realize that about your story, that 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 you had a, just a uh, blast off the launch pad with success on your first branded bundle before you even knew the basics that we teach around here, which is so great. Uh, and for those who don't know, we say it all the time if you're new around here, but we say this all the time, only about 5% of the people who start the way Sue did actually end up making money. That's why we don't start people there. But again, because of your background and you got some good products rocking, you had some big success and it just shows the potential of what's out there. But okay, I just wanted to be clear that uh, on, on what Ace and vanished on you, what product or brand vanished. Yeah, and and I was, you know, I was getting it through a little of online arbitrage and retail arbitrage as getting it from a big box retailer. I was wiping them out as fast as I could. You know, Amazon would send alerts, you know, send in a thousand more units. And I'd be like, I can't find a thousand more units. Where you tell me where they are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and I didn't, you know, I I didn't realize that the product had been discontinued because it was still in the warehouses at the big box retailer. So I could still mm. grab it. But, you know, that was a, it was a sort of sad day when it was discontinued. And then I was okay because it was really hard to keep up with it. And I realized a lot about myself in that process. I don't like RA. Like, I just don't. <laughs> it's just not my thing. It's things for other people. And I also realized that I kind of need a prep center, like doing all of this work by myself was pretty tough. And so just kind of that reset, even though it was sad to see the sales go away and kind of have to like start all over again, at least I was starting from a place that I understood the data. I understood what was in front of me and I understood what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. Right. 
Beautiful. Adds a lot of energy to your business model when you launch off the <laughs> very start with a, with a big win like that. A lot of good lessons learned, obviously, in this first couple of months. Let's keep the story going, though. I love uh, you kind of said offline before you hit record, you've done things in reverse order. And yeah. yeah, you kind of you kind of have, I, but you've made it work. I, I've made it work. And, and I think it's because of my background. I think the five percent of people that are successful with private label probably have a similar background. So as new sellers. I've, yeah. yeah. What, what so goes into I, that background? I'm curious, just so we can help. Yeah. People yeah. So I've one. spent 20 plus years being a um, independent consultant in the publishing space, mm -hmm. primarily for small kitchen appliances. So mm -hmm. it started with, you know, doing recipe content, recipe development, cookbooks, evolved to doing products in the box, evolved to doing, and products being in the box, like your instruction manual. So yeah. if you've ever bought a stand mixer, a slow cooker, gotcha. a, a pressure cooker, a countertop oven, I've chances are I've been involved in some or all of that. And then, you know, eventually evolved into new product introductions with brands where they wanted mm -hmm. to really talk about social auditing and what are consumers looking for and are these the right, right. functions? And can you do the testing for us? And so my team would do that. And, you know, we were pretty nimble on getting this stuff done for clients. And a lot of my clients were introducing their products on Amazon. Right. And so, I, you know, so I, I had kind of... You're as it, qualified as anyone I've ever heard to, to actually yeah, take so I just I had an inside view of it. Yeah. And then our publications, you know, we'd have to work with China. So like, I was very familiar with working with China. I understood the production cycle. Mm -hmm. And I also understood something that we talk about with replans, which is test small and not go too deep. Yes. And, you know, seeing my clients, you know, when we would have a new product and a prototype, you would think, I mean, these are billion dollar iconic brands. You know, you would think that they're coming in with thousands of units to prototype and test. Right. They were coming in with three or four hand built units you know, yeah. one to engineering, one to brand, one to me, you know, one to see if it's going to crash test. And so, you know, I really understood the start small. And yeah. so in saying I was successful in private label, I didn't go very deep. I, I didn't like buy thousands and thousands of units. I, I bought what I thought was an appropriate amount to test. And then it kind of continued to work on that from testing. And I think a lot of times, you know, when you hear gurus talking about private label, you know, the assumption is you're going out of the gate and you're making $100,000 like right out of the gate with private label. And you don't understand that there's PPC involved, that there's, you know, just coming in from China can be challenging. You know, there Absolutely. is the slow boat from China. So like all of those things that go into play it was just a more comfortable spot for me to be in. For sure. Uh, that makes total sense. Now that I know that part of your story, you had you yeah. had all the advantages, all the boxes that need to be checked, plus a few extras that I don't even typically consider that made you more than qualified. It's uh, you know, it, it, it's just been so frustrating for me. I mean, I've been teaching e-commerce for over 20 years, Amazon for 12, 13 plus, 14, come on, 14 actually years. And just the hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands at this point of stories of people that fill their garage with stuff they just can't sell now. And they want someone to help them market out of the hole they've dug. There's no magic button for that situation. And so he says, slow down. Our message to the market for a decade has been, don't start with private label unless you are ridiculously qualified, which you were, obviously. So congrats on that. Uh, but even you kind of dripped, dripped it into some of these other opportunities, which is kind of cool to see, right? You recognize yeah, and I guess let me talk about how I actually got into e-commerce. So two yeah. things two things happened. One, the pandemic. So, you know, as a as a consultant, a lot of my client money just kind of dried up. Ooh, yeah. You know, so it was kind of like, you know, not as busy. And then I also, I unfortunately had like a terrible accident and I broke my back in three places and I was literally laid up. And so it took me, you know, 18 months, you know, just to be able to walk again. And so like kind of in that 18 months of just kind of this like mental and physical journey, I really had to dig deep on like, what do I want to do when I come out of this? Like, I didn't think I could be back in an office situation because I don't think I can sit that long in one spot. And so I wanted something that gave me what I would call financial flexibility. I wanted to have flexibility with my time and flexibility with my space. And I also wanted to have very meaningful work. And this is part of that, but you know, I have 
passion projects that I, you know, I'm like very passionate about that I feel like I wanted to create space to volunteer in that capacity and I needed an income that would give me that flexibility. So that's how I just kind of like stumbled into, you know, Amazon to some degree. So you've left your former career. I have for, for the most part. I, I do, I, you know, the, the fi- yeah, the financial flexibility to me is the ability to say no, you know, exactly. so I do have clients that reach out, you know, right. I've done, you know, some, some recent work with clients that, you know, is pretty exciting, but if the work doesn't excite me, I want the ability to say no, you know, yeah. and, and concentrate on things that are pretty exciting to me. Well, I, I know you'd been on the show before and I'd forgotten about the the car accident that led to just, you know, and, and again, anytime I hear about someone who's gone through that dark place, that that pit, that hole, that valley, that uncertainty, kudos to you. I mean, that's why I call, call us business building warriors because you very easily could have just kind of been done at that point or you know that the, the physical therapy you had to go through i don't know what all was involved but i'm sure that's a huge part of your story the pain management that went into that just all the inconveniences of the trips to the doctor and the checkups and the just incredible mess you had to navigate so good for you but it good gives you, you. Incredible, it gives you incredible perspective on what's important. absolutely gratitude right to emerge with gratitude and, and of a sense of perspective a lot of people don't, they go dark. Well, you know, my big thing coming out of it was, you know, what can I do to really, to really help someone? And, you know, not only just on Amazon, you know, my, my side passion is I'm president of Chicago Rowing Foundation and I work with our athletes. Really? Uh, Yeah. So I work with our athletes on, um, on getting them to college. And so that is, you know, a passion project of mine, you know, our, our athletes, a third of them are in free or reduced lunch. So they don't have the money, you mm-hmm. know, but I've managed to have a hundred percent of our kids matriculate onto college. I've placed everyone at every single Ivy League school, every single high academic school. And to give myself time to be meaningful in that space for, for the kids meant I need to have flexible time on a business. And that's really what Amazon's been able to do for me. So, so I, I, I didn't know that part of your story. Yeah, it's it's You're- fun. So like if you are a rower that's listening to this, like you speak my language, like let's jump in a boat at the next conference. Like we'll go over to Orlando yeah. Rowing Club and, it is and awesome. We'll have- yeah, we'll talk more about the conference in a minute. They do have uh, a lot of, well, I mean, you know, there's a lake every 300 yards in <laughs> central Florida. So, wow. We'll talk about the conference there. But so you, you, you're able to row again. I mean, that's, you know, as a guy who considers yeah, myself I, an athlete as I'm getting older, like that kind of like, okay, you can't do anything for 18 months. Like that would be soul crushing for me. Like I'd really have to fight through that. You had to, you sound like you're someone who really appreciates your sport. Was that, yeah, I that had to been hard. Uh, I don't race anymore. So like I sure, like just that is stay. something that you know I can't do right now. But mm-hmm. you know, I was able, it took me 18 months to get back into a boat, but it was a pretty magical time just to be able to say, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna row, and I'm gonna make the boat move. And I can do that, you know, with my body that's you know not perfect and and you know, like was definitely really broken, but you know, some degree, I feel like rowing really kind of helped save me in terms of just my physical strength and being able to get back into the sport that I love. So I'm good friends with a physical therapist. Maybe he's listening, Jamie. Uh, He actually worked on me just this morning on a little injury I'm dealing with. Nothing like that. But uh, he says rowing is physiologically, if you can only do one exercise, get a rower. He said that to me for years. He's like, that's He's like, you know, anything else you do, there's going to be benefits and, and disadvantages. Rowing only, it's like pure advantage, pure, every part of your body is engaged, mind, body, spirit, every muscle, every tendon, every, you get your work and everything. He loves it. Yeah. It's a, a fascinating sport. So, I mean, I could talk all day long about that. I'm sure your listeners are not so interested in yeah, rowing. It, I, I, I'm fascinated. Uh, you and gritty. I could definitely dig into yeah. it more. I'm just, the point I want to make though, Sue, is I am, you're one of these people that, it's like the the more la- layers you peel back, the more interesting. Like, whoa, I didn't know that about you. You've <laughs> you've got the heart of a lion. You are an overcomer. You are a warrior. So, what an honor! Seriously, well done, man. That's just so cool. What you've and hopefully that resonates with some other people. I think we're going to encourage some folks out of some some semi dark places with what you've shared so far. And, and business has kind of been one of the things that pulled you out. 
And I know some of the relationships as well. The first time you were on our show was with a group of people, a mastermind you'd formed mostly, I think, if not exclusively, but at least mostly from this community of listeners to this show and people who attended our last conference, that sort of thing. Yeah. Maybe talk to us a little bit about the power of that. And we'll talk into some of the other strategies that you've used um, next after that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things about this business is it can be very lonely. And I think, you know, having, you know, the virtual connections with other people is important. And so, you know, I wanted to kind of create that smaller community. We have obviously within PAC, there's a large community of 70,000, right? But it's a little scary sometimes. Sometimes you sure, just want to ask too. a question, right? <laughs> so like, you know, this was a group of sellers. We had all started with the same group before. We had all evolved over to PAC. So there was kind of this joint history. And then we just kind of organized it into a primary group chat that is mostly, you know, FBA, FBM questions. And then we have subgroup chats under there as well. So we've got branded bundles. So everyone that's worked on that, you know, we help each other with trademarks. And, you know, I think I've designed everyone's logo in the group, you know, except for one person, because we just want to help each other, right? Like we want to help each other succeed. We have an influencer group. You know, I was approved for onsite commissions back in May. And one of the really interesting, powerful things about being with a group is there was four of us that were invited into an incentive by Amazon. And in a lot of these other groups that we're in, you know, people were like, oh, I made $500. I made a thousand dollars. Like, that's awesome. But this was a really, really hard incentive with a big payout. And the four of us just encouraged each other every single day, gave each other ideas on how to do it. And collectively, we made fifty thousand dollars between the four of us. And and that's that's meaningful. And that's the difference between having a strong community that has your back and maybe trying to go at it alone. Because there's so many days where I have to wake up and be like, I can do hard things. I can do hard things. And like try to convince myself of that. But having other engine people, who could, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. But having other people that can encourage you, you know, like we're, mm-hmm. we're all new sellers. Like we're all less than a year, right around a year. So it's, we don't yeah. know everything, but we're trying, you know, and, and anyone can encourage anyone else. It doesn't matter how long you've been selling. Everyone has started somewhere, right? Like my worst sales day is zero. Like your worst sales day was zero because we all had to start somewhere. I've lost my my worst sales days were probably negative, but thankfully never really negative. Like some folks like buying inventory that's never going to sell again. (laughs) Right. Right. But we, that's where we encourage inch deep, mile wide, proceed with caution, slow and steady. Well, you introduced a couple terms. I'm sure there's people who jotted them down real fast. They're like, Hey, what'd you just say? Amazon Influencer Program, branded bundles, a couple of things we've talked about so far. Yeah. And we'll get into the Influencer Program here in just a minute. If there's a website I want to introduce, provenazinfluencer.com. Provenaz is an Amazon Influencer.com. I'll stick it in the show notes too. We've got a new course coming soon from some people who are in our community who are doing really well with Amazon's Influencer Program. And that's what you were just describing where you make videos, you load them onto Amazon, and if those lead to people making purchases on Amazon, then you get paid. You don't have to drive any traffic. It's it's a pretty straightforward, pretty simple program that they've built, but you've dove pretty deep into that and you're doing well with it. But before we dive into that, I want to talk yeah. about the branded bundle thing and then we'll talk about influencers. Of okay. Of course. Because we, we kind of left that part of your story, like you had some momentum, then it kind of crashed. Now you're getting back into it. I know you've taken some of our content lately. Let's just talk about your branded bundles. And then we'll get yeah, into but I would say probably 95% of my business right now is branded bundles right. and prime. I've used the replans mostly as a testing ground to see, you know, like check the sales velocity. If yeah. it's working as a replan, it's likely going to work as a branded bundle. Right. Um, I don't want to breeze past that, Sue. Sorry, time yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, of course. This is okay. why, let me just allow me to make a point for a moment for the listener's sake, especially if you're new. The basic skills you learn selling replans. We don't teach replans because we want you to stay there for nine years. If you're making money, keep doing it. Build a system. Make it beautiful. I do replans all day, every day in our business. But that's the foundation and that skill set, like you just said, Sue, being able to read, keep it, recognize the trends, recognize what's likely to work and isn't likely to work, getting a little bit of your keyword research, mixing that in. Now you're ready to do a branded bundle and give it the maximum chance of actually getting some traction 
and going somewhere. So those replen skills serve your branded bundle success. I just want to make sure and emphasize that for folks. That's why we start people there because it is a foundation that helps you no matter which direction you go from there. It's like those basic ninja skills of navigating Amazon. Yeah. And and so I, I think for the branded bundle business, you know, as more time has gone by, I've gotten a bit smarter in my selections, um, what I'm going to come out with, you know, using, as we said, some of the replens. And then, you know, there was a little FOMO. So I was just like, I should probably go get the course and, and, you know, do the proven bundle course, which was great. And it's extremely content rich. There's a lot of things that you can dive into. And, you know, I, I would say my, my biggest, my biggest thing for anyone that's gone through the course is just, try one. Like, you know, I think you can get overwhelmed a little bit with like all of the data and trying to make sure it's perfect, but just go ahead and try it and just kind of start to build your listings, start to see what's going to work. I was not using all the data tools that Leanna and Nathan were. I was not using Helium 10 and and had success without it, but, you know, decided like, okay, well, I, now I'm going to go look, I'm going to get Helium 10. And it's actually been really good for me to go back and see which ones were not successful after having taken the course. And now I understand why they were not successful and they probably should never have been launched to begin with and which ones frankly were successful and the data behind it and the keywords behind it and really trying to optimize my listings and PPC, you know, to have a greater launch and a greater success with the bundle. So, so I've enjoyed the course, you know, it was over eight weeks. I think I did five of the eight sessions. Right. Um, yeah. I think they're kind of wrapping it up now. They're recording this. Yeah. That's provenbrandedbundles.com, which is our latest bundle training. It's going to replace some of the older training that we did a couple of years ago inside the proven Amazon course. Uh, but fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for talking about that. And you said it's 95% of your business is your private label and your bundles. I didn't ask you before we started recording today, so no pressure, obviously, but about how's that going for you? Like put some numbers behind it if you're okay with that. Oh yeah. I probably average between 25 and 30,000 a month, which for me is like, it's just me. I have a prep center. I don't have any VAs. If I'm just maintaining my business, that's maybe eight to 10 hours a week to do that sort of volume. I'm probably 110% ROI in about 23 to 25% net margins. And I just recently, about two months ago, started paying myself. It's not huge, but you know, it's enough um, that's meaningful to say, okay, this is good. I can take some money off the table. I can give myself a salary and then still have money to invest back into my business. You know, do I think my business could be a lot bigger? Of course, like I, I know what I need to do. It's just a function of do I want to spend the time to make it, you know, 50, 75, 100,000. You've got growing teams to think about, right? I know. Exactly. I yeah. Know. So, no, a I lot totally of other stuff going it. on. I totally um, get it. Yeah. What a beautiful business. Eight to 10 hours or so a week, 25% net on 25 to $30,000 a month with plenty of room to scale. And by no means have you hit a ceiling here on what you're capable of. If anything, this is just foundation for all kinds of other exciting projects and opportunities, uh, including some things. If you ever want to get into leadership around here and do some things around here and, you know, the door is open, you've more than earned. You've got your warrior badge. That's for sure. You've sustained success over a significant period of time. You've got a teacher's heart. Obviously, you really care about others. So it'd be a pleasure to to plug you in somewhere <laughs> around here if you're ever interested. Yeah, of course. Wow. What a, what a fantastic story. You're going to really encourage some people today, I think. Well, we oh, got some people, I have a feeling, I'm just kind of reading the minds of the listeners right now going, okay, talk about that, that influencer thing. What was that again? 50,000? What? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what I love about influencer is it's gotten me out of my comfort zone a little bit, and it's really stretched me in ways that I wasn't expecting. So I was a proofer. I I had a TikTok or I have a TikTok and that is how I qualified. So it's really a two-step process. You have to have a social media account to qualify being Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. They need to be- YouTube one or not? Oh, yes. You can do YouTube. I think Um, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's maybe how I qualify. Yeah, they have to be public. So you can't have a yeah. private Facebook group and try to qualify that way. Right. So if, you have, upon, if you have a public following, it doesn't have to be huge. I've heard of people turning on TikTok and then a few weeks later, they get approved. Now, the program is probably going to change over time, which is why we're we're getting this thing rolled out. 
Uh, that website, again, before I let you, but while I'm talking, was uh, provenazinfluencer.com. I'll stick a link in the show notes. That's our training content on this. But yeah, please continue. Yeah. So, you know, then you, once you are in the program, you have three chances to submit three videos for on site commission. And there's, there's definitely some better ways to do it and, you know, some tiny tips and tricks. I was fortunate that my first three that were submitted were accepted for on site commission that happened back in May. And then I didn't do anything with it. So I just, I was like, I don't really know. Like, this really isn't my thing. I don't know if I want to do anything with it. And then when I was at the conference, you know, I think I was overwhelmed by like all of the amazing ideas and the amazing ways that you can make money. And I just kind of said, well, no one's really talking about influencer. Maybe I just need to go back and and do something with it. And I literally started making reviews in the hotel room at the conference of like the sink, the shower, you know, the, you know, whatever. And so that's kind of where I started. And then I did everything I could inside my house. You know, all, all I was doing was taking the Amazon lens from the Amazon app, going around scanning stuff in my house. You don't have to, there's no ungating. You know, if it's sold on Amazon, you can do a review video on it. And then I just kind of over time perfected kind of what my style is. I feel like everyone has a different style. So like for me, I wanted to kind of state what the problem was and then how I solved the problem. My videos are 60 to 90 seconds. I do them on my iPhone. You know, I... I use Seller Amp to kind of keep me organized. So a lot of times, like if I'm researching something, like I will just like, I've got separate spreadsheets set up for influencer that way. And then the other thing that I've been able to do is just call up friends and family and say like, hey, can I bring you a Starbucks? (laughs) And can I review your house for a couple of hours? And what I- Because the constraint you run into is products to review without having to go buy stuff. Exactly, exactly. So you'd be surprised. Everyone is- Everyone is like a little sheepish about like, oh, I actually buy a lot of stuff on Amazon. I don't want you to know about it until you get to their house. And then you say, listen, like you're really helping me out. Tell me why you bought this product. And they like just can't stop talking because they've done all this research. They love the product. And a lot of times I'll just film them and put them on my channel because they can, you know, they're so much more, you know, uh, they love the product so much they want to talk about it. But that's how I've done a lot of it. And I haven't bought any products. You know, I probably averaging between like $75 a day and 125 bucks a day, you know, so are they huge numbers? Not really, but they're meaningful numbers and right. they're numbers that are growing, right? Of and- course. Yeah. The math that we did, uh, we, we're going to, the course that we're going to be launching, we had a couple of trainers who are going to be doing it. We figured out it's about $8 per month per video is what they were calculating their earnings had been so far, or, or that's about what they were pulling in. But, you know, it's going to vary, obviously. Um, right. But you, you make the video one time, upload it. You don't have to drive traffic, you don't have to do any you know, keyword marketing or anything. It's just you, you, your real work is in picking the products. If you do, if you understand replans, you do a little keep a research, yeah, this thing's hot. It, it's not seasonal. It's going to be a nice city producer for me. It's in a higher price range. People aren't doing these. I've, I mean, some people might be, but you know, you, you do them for like five, $6 products. You're not going to make, won't make money. money. Yeah. But you know, you get up into the higher price point products and there's some things you can kind of look for and, uh, and you've got to be genuinely helpful. I mean, you can't just say, hey, this is the product and here's how you buy it. Like, no, you know, you're not, you can't make trash. It's not going to work. No. And, and I started going back and kind of just analyzing the videos I was putting out there and which ones were converting better and really working on my conversion rate. A couple of little tricks that I do, you know, I use chat GPT. So sure. I literally just, you know, copy the listing, you know, and I just throw it in chat GPT. It spits out for me like three different types of intros. You know, I get five bullet points that come out of it. And then I get five titles. There's 60, you know, characters or less. I have it optimized. You know, I tell it what tone I want. So I think I'm not, you know, I'm trying to do both quantity and quality. And Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I'd rather spend the extra time to do it right than just Mm -hmm. putting stuff out there. And then there's different commission rates based upon the different categories. 
you know, right or wrong, most of the products that I have based upon my background are in the kitchen, which is only 2.3%. So, you know, luxury beauty is like 5%. I'm not like a luxury beauty person. So like, that's like (laughs) sad for me, but great for other people. So I I love it. I think it's just been a ton of fun to just kind of review. And um, I don't think a year ago, if you would have said like, hey, Sue, are you going to be an influencer? I'd be like, really? Like, no. Yeah, it's a little misleading because people think influencer, they're like, well, I don't have 3 million followers on TikTok. I'm not an influencer. No, that's not what we're talking about. Very minimal influence gets you qualified because again, from Amazon's perspective, they just want to know that you're someone who's capable of influencing someone to make a purchase. They see some social media proof. You've got some people following you. Okay, make some videos. If your videos lead to sales of products, you're in, you know, if you make, and again, I love you just said, just, uh, are you just holding your phone with one hand and talking about the product if you have to hold it in the other hand kind of stuff? I mean, it's that simple, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, it's literally that simple. I have a, I have a ring light. I have like a selfie stick, you mm-hmm. know, that I use. That and, helps. Yeah. If you need a light. Um, and yeah. then, you know, I've even, you know, it's like when I go to people's houses, I'm like, do you mm-hmm. want me to teach you how to do this? But I've only had one person. I've only had one person that has yeah. actually taken me up on it, sure. but she has, you know, we've worked together on client projects. She's also a recipe developer. So between the two of us, we have so much stuff and she had a really strong social media following. So we've been working on stuff together, including reaching out to brands now and doing joint opportunities and gift collaborations with brands where if they work with us, now they're going to get two videos, like one from each one of us, you know, on our influencer pages and Amazon. So there's great opportunities to partner with people to... Yeah. Uh, to really one, just- one of the things I plan to do is just go and pay for the time at one of these local, uh, you know, equipment rental places and just pay them to demonstrate the high-end products there that happen to be on Amazon, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. why not? It's been yeah. a day. Have them. Well, and the other thing I've done is when I've traveled, I will now pull up an Airbnb listing and I'll scan the entire listing with Amazon Lens. Is that table on Amazon? Great. I'm going to go and like where I'm going to stay instead of maybe staying at a hotel. So I can just kind of like, you know, scan the entire house and and do videos. Seeing new stuff you can review without having to pay for it becomes the, becomes the game, right? Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. That's provenazinfluencer.com. There's a link in the show notes. We're launching that class with all kinds of great creative ideas. And we'd love to have you as a part of it, Sue, just to come on in and share what you know and maybe learn a few new things as well. I think the collaboration of the people from this community as we start to do this in a larger number. And and again, you know, millions of products are eligible for these videos. It's not like I'm going to be stepping on each other. It's it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool program. Uh, so, So that's coming. Well, I know one other thing I wanted to talk to you about was our upcoming event in May uh, yeah. because uh, that's The Proven Conference is the website. Three words, theprovenconference.com, May of 2024. That's the 23rd through the 25th in Orlando, Florida. You've got plans to be there, correct? Absolutely. And- I do. And, and I did it right, like literally from my phone at the conference this year in Ohio. Right. It was such a great conference. And, you know... It seems so cliche because everyone says this about the relationships and the people that you meet, but that was really amazing to just be surrounded with other people that are going through the same journey as you. I even had a chance to sit down, you know, because I was doing some branded bundles and I was, you know, at a VIP table and we started talking about it. I had done a workshop for my, um, for my mastermind on branded bundles. And so I had like a little PowerPoint presentation and this was before obviously like the new courses come out. So, but I shared with some people at my, you know, VIP table and, you know, these sellers that were amazing and have been around for 10 years, like, can we have lunch with you to learn more? And I was like, Absolutely. Like, and that's the sort of like relationships that come out of there. There was a ton of content overwhelmed with how much content, you know, I came back and I was like, oh, I've got to learn how to do Lego buy and sell. I've got to like go do print on demand and more bundles and like, you know, path to a hundred aces. Like that sounds great. And I think I failed miserably when I first came back because I was trying to do a little bit of everything and got absolutely nothing done. So I really just kind of said, I just need to focus in on like, what do I do well that I can do better? 
and that was bundles and private label. And then, you know, what's something new that I want to try that was influencer and what's something I completely suck at and I really need to learn. And that was PPC. So that's kind of like my three things that I really came out of focusing on from the conference. That's some great ad- advice kind of packed neatly in there. And it, I call it right ideas versus good ideas. I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about that before, Sue, but I call good ideas dangerous and even toxic because there's so many of them out there and they can distract you from ever accomplishing anything. Good ideas are everywhere. But the right idea, and I like how you identified it, the stuff that you're kind of already positioned for, like life has kind of been leading me to this moment. It makes sense. I've got the connections, the experience I've got, you know, and we start people with replans because it doesn't take a lot of connections or experience or skills. You know, that's a, that's a low level thing. Anybody can step into and learn the basics. But once you're there, what makes sense? What's right for me? And no one can answer that question for you necessarily, although a good coach can certainly help. But yeah, like you said, we had 40 sessions at this last event. I haven't seen all the videos from the last event. There were a lot of really good sessions. I just didn't make it to. I couldn't possibly. I asked on our leadership team of the 40 sessions that we just had. I, this was like after the event. We're kind of like, you know, going over the event. I said, how many of you went to more than six sessions? Only about half of them did. <laughs> <laughs> of the 40, like there's just so many great, when you get all the videos, obviously, and go back to them anytime you'd like, but it really is about the relationships. The content is great. You get the recordings, you know, be there, be a part of it. But I love how you said, okay, what was the right ideas for me? What's something I want to try and experiment with of the 15 things it could be, let's play with one. And that was the influencer for you. And you, you're doing well with it because you focused in and you did what it took and you I mean, you've cranked out how many videos at this point of your 90 second videos? I have. Yeah. I mean, I have a lot. I have 800. Yeah. I mean, Uh, that's significant work, right? It's a lot of work and I, and I, I, it's a lot of work. And I, I think we can all say like, oh, I'm just making like dumb videos on my phone, but it takes time. So, you know. A lot Absolutely. of time. And I would say it's an 80-20 rule too. Like, wouldn't is, is there a Pareto principle playing out here where most of your revenue is coming from your top 20, 25% of your um, videos? Have you taken a look at that? It's, it's maybe. I, I would say there's certain categories that I play better in just because yeah. I'm very knowledgeable in certain things in the kitchen. Um, so right. I can demonstrate that a little bit better. Amazon was a little weird this past month with the incentive. Like people were saying like, you know, they weren't getting seen as well. So I think things are beginning to sort of settle down and it takes a bit of time to get on the carousel too. So like I probably have a hundred videos that have been recently uploaded that, you know, I have zero views on because they're not on the carousel. And so like Amazon's not playing. Getting them uploaded takes a little time. But still, kudos to you. So you you got a new skill, you got a new thing you're experimenting with, you're getting this stuff, you're keeping this stuff bolted down that you've that's worked in the past. You're not losing sight of that. Trying a new thing. You're not trying 10 new things. You're trying one new thing and you're doing it right. We're going to bolt that down soon. You have a system that's going to fit into your schedule nice and clean. And the one uncomfortable thing that you're playing with that you feel like you need to be stronger with. Although I would argue on the pay-per-click side, which is one you mentioned, that new skill, I just, I don't really have a lot of skill there. That's where it's easy to just bring in a pro. It's like, hey, yeah, you know, do well, this my, for me. <laughs> my first date, and that's what I did. I hired someone. It, she did a phenomenal job. You know, I hired her on Fiverr, and uh, you know, she's out of Utah, and she just knocked it out of the park on that ASIN. And, and and I could really see the power of PPC when it's done well. And then, of course, I'm like, well, let me try it by myself. And then that was like miserable. So, you know, and there's a balance. I, I'm using some AI technology now for my PPC, which is certainly helping and automating some things, but it's it's not perfect. I need to get better at it. And yeah. that's a constant moving target too. You know, yeah. if it's working, there's competitors coming. That's always a factor too. So but, you know. but even with, you know, advertising my branded bundles and my private label, the influencer side has opened up my eyes to other things. So like today, I just launched a special social media deal for one of my, you know, bundles, which is a deal code. And it, there's a lot of people that have their own Facebook groups just with Amazon deals. So working directly with them to launch things that way, you know, doing gift collaborations, you know, one of the things, if you're an influencer and you're a brand owner, I'm not allowed to do a review of my own products. 
And so having gift collaborations with other people that can actually do a video review. And right. I know what's wrong with that. Myself, right. So I have no problem telling them, like, you should make money off of this. This product is selling. It'd be great if you could do a review on it. Let me send you some products. So so it's really like I, I feel like that combination of both influencer and branded bundles has actually worked really remarkably well together. That's fantastic. Yes. And I hate to admit it, but that hadn't even clicked in my head yet. Here we are launching the world's foremost training, in my opinion, I'm a little biased, on branded bundles, provenbrandedbundles.com, and the provenazinfluencer.com program. The two go together beautifully. I hadn't even occurred to me yet, but you're doing it. (laughs) That's what you're talking about. they They go together great. The other thing I'd say about bundles, and because I didn't watch all of the sessions, maybe they mentioned this, but virtual bundles, I do those too. And those have been a lot of fun to kind of like really think about. It's also a great way to do a seasonal bundle. Mm -hmm. So imagine, you know, we're coming up on Halloween, right? So like you can have a candy bowl as a separate ASIN and a box of candy as your other ASIN. And then you can do a virtual bundle with those together. And so when Halloween's over, replace that, create another ASIN with a Christmas dish, you know, and so you can always have these seasonal virtual bundles if that's how you want to do it. So and that's that's Amazon been Amazon will assemble it for you. You don't yeah. have to. Yeah. If it, yep. If it's ASINs that are in stock that you're under your control, bundle them up. Let's go. Yep. That's beautiful tip. So many golden nuggets. I think I, this is one of those episodes where I feel like we've introduced, I don't know, five, maybe seven topics that we easily could have committed a full hour, two, three, a course, <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing it. That's the beauty. I want to remind the listeners, this isn't about diving in deep and giving you every possible piece of the information you're going to need in order to do this, because this is going out to a wide audience, but it is saying, hey, this stuff works. It's worth dropping a couple dollars to get the course for the one that's right for you. Not a good idea. If you just took good ideas from today, don't do anything. If you feel like one of these ideas is a right idea, that's the one you need to buckle down, turn off Netflix for a few weeks and learn it, do it, launch it. And you're going to, you're going to see the benefits of it. What else is on your mind today? You're just a a wealth of information. You're an inspiration. You're a warrior. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I, you know, the the only other thing that's really on my mind, and I listened to one of your podcasts where, you know, there was a little bit about, you know, being, you know, having a disability and potentially like, is this a good option for you? And I think when I was coming out of my injuries, you know, I wanted something I could, I joke about it. Like I sit on my couch, you know, it's like, I need something I could sit on my couch and like really not have to move a whole lot. And I think that that is really beautiful with this business. Like you don't have to be in an office. You can sit on the corner of your couch. You know, um, there was a portion in my recovery where I was in a wheelchair. Like I was not doing Amazon then, but certainly I could have, if that was something um, that, you know, I was ready to do at that point in my life. But I would say it's a business for anyone and everyone. And it does take a lot of focus and determination it's not an easy business, you know? And I think sometimes when we talk about all of these, you know, successes and and I hear so many other podcasts where I'm like, wow, that's like, that's amazing. Like they did a hundred thousand dollars. Like, you know, that's an amazing success. It's, it's a lot of hard work. That's really a lot of hard work. And, And I think it's okay to crawl first, you know, and then walk and then run because, you know, I didn't want to take out any loans. I wanted to reinvest everything back into the business, you don't have to go out and start out at, you know, 25,000, 100,000. You can start small. You can build and make the business successful. And and I'm happy with kind of how I've approached my business. I've made a ton of mistakes too. And I've learned from those mistakes. They just thankfully weren't huge financial mistakes for me, you know, but that's, I guess that's, that would be my message is like, if you're on the fence about starting, just start, like you can do hard things. Like we can all do hard things. We can get out of our comfort zone and do something that maybe you didn't think a year ago you could do. So there you go. And if you, if you have any sort of like physical ailments where it's like, you need to just sit and rest and put your feet up. And, uh, you know, that's me all the time. (laughs) It's a great business to be able to do that with. I'm just, I have this visual of you on stage saying that in front of a whole bunch of people and they just stood up and clapped because you just encouraged them all. You know, one of the things I love about this show and the guests we've had with over 700 episodes at this point is 
if you stick around long enough, whatever excuse you have, we're going to destroy it in about 13, 15 different ways. <laughs> like yeah. there's nothing left on the table for you to say, well, it worked for them, but it can't work for me because like we've removed everything that comes next. Yeah, Every absolutely. Excuse. If you've got the, if you've got the discipline, it really comes down to, are you, do you have the discipline? Yes. Everything in life worth having is hard, right? I mean, come on. You should have learned that in kindergarten. If you didn't, I'm sorry. Now I'm here to tell you, right? Business included, Amazon included. Yes. It's going to take a little work, but there's no other excuse. And, and you're, I, I feel inspired and encouraged and rejuvenated just hanging out with you today. I've got to imagine a lot of other people feel the same way. So thank you, Sue. That was fantastic. Of course, it's it's been an absolute pleasure being here. It truly has, and hopefully, there's a little some words of nuggets and you know some words of inspiration for people. Oh, this is one of those go back and listen to it again episodes. I can tell you already. I've done enough of these to know this is going to be one that's like, why is this one getting twice as many listens? Oh, that's right, people are listening to it twice and scribbling notes. So much good stuff in there. Well, God bless you, Sue. Good hanging out with you. Can't wait to see you in May and your whole crew. Get them all. Yeah, we're so excited to be there and picture. Yeah, yeah, come find us. Like, come talk to us. Don't be scared. I'm a little bit of a social introvert, as I say, but you know, it's like cocktail parties and like hanging around small talk. That's not, mm-hmm. not my thing. But right. get us talking about something that we are interested in, and and we'll talk your ear off all day long. So that's kind of the dirty little secret of of uh, e commerce is I, we're about eighty percent introverts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone goes to these it. things like everyone else already knows each other. I'm an introvert. Should I have even have come? And like everybody, it's kind of like middle school dance, you know? It's like, I don't know if I you should have come to this thing or not. But by the end, it's like that. I've always said, it's like that end of summer camp feeling, you know, when you're a kid, it's like, oh, it's over already. This was so great. And so many good people. And I can't wait to do this again. Uh, it's just a, if you've never done it, this is going to be our, our 12th one uh, coming up, which that's crazy, Sue. With the in all of e-commerce, I haven't found another event that's run twelve annual events. Like that's, I think, yeah. we've, I think we're the champs right now. I mean, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Maybe it's out there. And, I haven't seen and it. And you're the best. Um, you know, I went to another conference with the other group that I'm with, and it was it, it wasn't the level of detail, the instruction, the inspiration. I just got so much value out of just going to the conference. It truly. Well, thanks for that. Well, instruct me a little bit. I always like hearing, and you know, this could be on or off the record. It's up to you. But uh, we're always looking for ways to improve it. But what was it? What is it? Do you think makes the difference? I I think I'd like to think that I know what those elements are that we focus on that make it different, special, and has sustained. But what's your perspective? Having been to a few others, and yeah, I think it's digging deep on the content in a way that you can really move your business forward. And I think a lot of the other conferences can get a little superficial, um, like, you know, just go in and scan and then you can flip a profit versus like, Hey, this is really like, you know, the replens business. This is how you get a path to a hundred ASINs. This is what you need to be looking for. That was a great session, you know, with the Olsons and, you know, I walked away from there going like, oh, I should probably go do a hundred ASINs. Like, have I done a hundred ASINs? Of course not. But, but here's the big, but the lessons that they teach in the Keepa in understanding like where your dropout is and like where the potential is and where you should be playing. Those are a hundred percent translatable into branded bundles. And so understanding that piece of it was super helpful. So even if you end up in a session where it's not a hundred percent aligned with your business, that's that's okay. I think maybe something that I, and I think I might've mentioned this before, you know, it would have been great. I missed my mastermind because I needed to go to the PPC. So like some of that, it it wasn't like offered twice. I felt really bad. So maybe not having those conflicts, you know, I think it would have We've heard that feedback. We tried to make the VIP experience as far as what we assign you a mastermind so that it doesn't conflict with any other sessions. We've had a significant amount of that feedback. So we may have to bump that as a, you know, go late one day or day two or something and, and make it happen. Then Uh, we did have it at the end of the day, but it was overlapping some other events. So yeah, for those who don't know what we're talking about, if you come as a VIP, which will sell out, we've already sold out a lot of those tickets in the the pre-sale that went out to only to attendees last year. So when tickets go on sale here soon, theprovenconference.com, if you choose VIP, you'll get assigned to a mastermind group and that group will meet at the event. But like Sue was saying, uh, we met during other sessions. So some people were a little torn, right? I hear you on that. Thanks for that feedback. 
Yeah. And it also might be nice to have some sort of coding system. So like if you want to be inspired, this is an inspirational, you know, breakout that you can go to. Inspiration track. Yeah. Right. Well, we had the newbie track this year, which I think was a success. But I think what I think when I was going through some of them, I was more focused on instructional material Mm -hmm. and some other people that I was with for my mastermind really wanted to be more on the inspirational side and kind of lift them up. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, some of them we weren't sure which one was which. (laughs) So we ended up, it's like, oh, it's perfect for them and not so great for me. But we actually, you know, we were sharing with each other in our mastermind. There's three of us from our mastermind that were there in person and a bunch of people doing it virtually. So we would just quickly put a group chat and say, okay, this is what I learned. And we started calling it like, this is an inspirational one. Like this is an instructional one. So like, if you need to learn, go watch this. If you want to be inspired, go watch this instead. So that's, That's just something. so great. You did the event as a group with your virtual mastermind. I love it. I had no idea that you guys had done that. I love it. The event, just kind of wandering around and, and seeing groups gathered. And in one case, I walked up, I'm like, you guys look like you know each other. It's like, yeah, we, we've never actually all been at the same place at the same time, but we've been a mastermind group for like three and a half years. All started off as yeah. proven Amazon course students, all have beautiful businesses. They meet weekly and encourage each other. And they'd never been together before. And there they were at the event. And I was like, I was the outsider. Like I didn't, like I was the total stranger. They were all like getting back to their conversation as soon as I left because they were just thrilled to be together. I love those kind of organic relationships that have sprung up in the group. And and if you're not tapping into that, I'm speaking to the listeners today. If you're not tapping into that with intentionality, you're missing out on a lot of the benefit of what this community has to offer because you can't do business alone. Lone wolves do not survive in, in any environment, specifically the lonely arena of e-commerce. If you're trying to do it as a lone wolf, you're missing out. And it's just, it's a simple DM to someone, right? Like, you know, I, my, my first, you know, my first response I had was someone within the community. They had asked something about bundles. I had responded there. I think they might've been looking for a lawyer. I can't remember. I had responded. And then we started communicating. We realized that we lived 45 minutes apart from each other. And so we actually met up in person. That's great. You know, it was just like, here's what I'm doing. And, you know, she had been selling longer than I have and sharing Mm -hmm. that information. And, you know, so I understand for me and how I work, like I work better with people, you know, I work better surrounded with people that I'm comfortable asking dumb questions to and being like, okay, that's a dumb question. Like, can you help me out? You know? And, and I just like sharing. I, I, I really enjoy helping other people. So, you know, if something, and especially if there's things that I've gone through that maybe mistakes that I've made and you can avoid that mistake, let me share this mistake that I made and this is why you don't want to do that. So, you know, it's all you have to do is like, you don't wait to be asked into a mastermind, just create your own. That's right. Two thoughts on what you just said. One is you said you just love to share. And I think if if we went back and parse on, you know, I'm not a psychologist or a counselor, but I'd like to think sometimes I'd be a decent one. But I'd like to think that just kind of knowing, got, getting to know you today, that a lot of what pulled you out of that dark place, you mentioned the kids, the rowing, wanting to get back to that. Without exception, having done 700 plus episodes of this podcast and a lot of conversations offline with other entrepreneurs who have been through a dark place, it's becoming other focused. That's the point I'm trying to make. Having that other focused goal in mind, I want to get back to the point where I can help others fill in the blank, whatever it is, and then intentionally setting about that. Even look at like, and I've mentioned this on a few episodes recently, like even traditional recovery programs, like you went through a physical recovery. You know, there's people who go through substance recovery, abuse recovery. They all have the same plan. You start off in a place where things are out of control and you need help. And you recognize that and you get the help you need and you step through the steps. And at the end, you're helping other people get out of whatever it is that they're facing. Maybe it's the same thing you face. Maybe it's something else, but you have that warrior spirit now and you're helping them that other oriented where you're doing it with others and you're doing it for others. And as entrepreneurs, we're just surrounded with opportunities to do that. So, so don't isolate, make it about others. That's how you get out of that dark place. And the other thing I wanted to point out was you, you kind of randomly just discovered someone who lived 45 minutes from you. Well, in our Facebook group, our free group at silentgym.com, there's uh, some instructions in the top featured videos that tell you how to find people who live near you and intentionally reach out and form those 
communities and maybe there's already a group formed near you and you just don't know about it with 74,000 of us, you know, good odds that there's someone within reasonable distance of you, you could be connecting with on a regular basis. We'd love to see that happen. Um, but those are the two things that came to mind when I was listening to you talk there that, that last segment of it. I have a feeling we could do this all day, but I need to wrap, <laughs> start wrapping this one up. You've been a Absolutely. tremendous guest, Sue. Thank you. Anything oh, else on your mind before we wrap up? Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. good. Awesome. Well, you did a tremendous job. Thank you. 